Hello. Wow. Uh, I didn't notice you come in. Um, thanks for coming in. I, I I feel like we need to talk about something. We need to kind of address the elephant in the room. I think we've we've established a rapport by now. We can tell each other anything, right? Well, you're using your M2s wrong. I didn't want to be the one to say it. I wanted to wait, but honeymoon period over. A lot of you out there are just not using your M2 to the full potential you can. Whether it is that you've gone for full DIY MOBOs like this, or you've gone for turnkey NAS solutions, there are just simply too many of you that see a tiny little M2 slot on your system and go, do you know what? I'm just going to slam an SSD inside that. Bish bash bosh, and now I'm going to go. And there's simply more you can do. And that's what this video is about. You don't have to go for any of the things I'm going to talk about today, but right now, if you've got a spare M.2 slot on your NAS or your PC system, don't just immediately go and buy yourself a nice little SSD. This video is about looking about what else is out there and if the grass is greener. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Arguably, this is the one that kickstarted this whole video this do you know right now it has actually become surprisingly affordable to add via the m2 slot a little adapter that allows you to add 10 gbe no longer is 10 gigabit ethernet restricted to big chunky pcie cards or if your system doesn't even have a pcie slot you can go ahead and add 10 gigabit ethernet to your system of course there are caveats number one you got to know your system's compatible and right now if you're running a true nas or unraid nas server congratulations your system's compatible we checked if you're running a windows or even some mac systems you can go ahead and use this although the mac one may need some tinkering however if you are running uh, a turnkey NAS solution like a Terramaster, like a QNAP, like a Synology, like an Acer Store, you can't really use these right now. But if you're running a DIY rig and you happen to get some of the more modern PCIe, uh, sorry, uh, MITX MOBOs that are rocking out the gate right now, like this one, this has got three M2 NVMe slots on the front and the back. And that means there's a huge amount of potential where you don't have to just go directly for storage. Do you know what? This isn't even the end of the road. When it comes down to going greater than 10G, some brands out there are going crazy town banana pants. Link Real, a brand that we talked about in a recent video, has added not only a M2 to 10GBE connection, but they've got a dual 10GBE to M.2 adapter listed on their site. So that's 20 gigabits per second of network connectivity utilized via a single M2 interface. Seriously, it's getting big. It's quite amazing to see how far technology can go forward if you're not paying attention. Hang on, are you saying adding 10 GBE isn't good enough for you? It's not flexible enough for you? I'm not doing enough for you? Well, what about this? This allows you to add a PCIe times 16 card. That's right, you can add via this adapter, this is a PCIe Gen 4 times 4 so although you're going to add a 16 card, bear in mind you're going to be restricted down to times 4 this nevertheless allows you to add a PCIe card to a simple M.2 NVMe slot. Think of the potential there. Yes, you could have gone ahead and added 10 GPE like earlier, but why stop there? Why not add a 25 gig card? Why not add a dual port 10 GPE card? Why not add a 40 gig card? Yes, you're still going to be restricted to times four, uh, four times four, but nonetheless, adding this means that even smaller chassis have the potential to have, with maybe a little curated external box, the ability to add a PCIe card. Now, much like our previous adapter, there are restrictions. We're still in the process of testing this out on different now systems. But probably one of the biggest problems you're going to find for some of you, you can see it at the end, is that white clip. Power. Some PCIe's need that extra power from the MOBO. So make sure if you're going to install this in a system that it has a sufficiently relevant port to add power to the PCIe card. But nevertheless, right now, if you have a spare M2 slot, you can add full-size PCIe cards to a number of systems very easily and weirdly affordably. Computer? Computer? Ah. Hello, computer. Next up, an adapter that I talked about in my John's Bow N2 build, and indeed some of you raised in some of my other videos. Do you know, some ITX motherboards, although they're very compact, 
don't really make a lot of arm room for SATA storage. Maybe you've got boards like this one that have started dropping SATA in favor of HD mini SAS fan out connectors like that. that are all right, but then you have to make sure you can scope that into your build. Or you have boards like this one, which don't have the HD mini SAS, but only have two SATA connectors there on the side. Hell, even this mobile I've had on the table for the whole video so far only has one SATA connector there on the top. So what's the answer? Well, you probably guessed by now, boom, an M.2 to six SATA M.2 connector there. This adds six SATA drives and it allows you to go real low. It allows you to even go as low as the tiniest of MOBOs there, micro boards, that allow you, as long as they've got one little connector there on the top there, it means that this tiny little board, which here has got four times 2.5 GPE there on the rear, a couple of sodium, and is rocking out the gate with a Pentium CPU, the N6005, can now add six more SATA drives just using one M.2 slot. Now, yes, six storage drives aren't gonna be as fast as adding one Gen 3 M.2 NVMe at times four speed, but frankly, some of us just want capacity. Imagine this with six 24 TB drives. It's just bonkers. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! And talking of bonkers, let's face it, if there's two letters that have been knocking around all over the place in the last few years, AI has to be said that right now, AI adapters for M.2 are becoming increasingly affordable. This is the previous generation. This was the Coral, a Google TPU adapter. Pick it up for about 20, 30 nicker, add this into an M.2 slot, and all of a sudden, AI processes that can access this dedicated engine can do a greater job. This isn't any graphics card level support there. You can forget about database recognition, but when it comes to standard pre-configured recognition that doesn't need to access a constantly evolving database, this will help. This is actually supported on a few different NAS brands. I think QNAP have been the loudest, and it allows you to run AI processes with a significant reduction in system resources. And if you are running a system that takes advantage of uh, detection via AI rather than recognition, chances are you're gonna see some benefits in adding an AI equipped engine here into your system. As mentioned, this is the previous generation and more capable, powerful, yet efficient alternatives have already started arriving. Level two has a memory of 4.1 megabytes, a fair old number of megabytes as I'm sure you'll agree. The fish, on the other hand, can't remember a thing. Now this last one, I'll grant you, it's a bit naughty. I hate seagulls. There you go, that right there. This one is to do with a lot of more modern boards that are trying to be really economical about the space on them. And we're seeing an increasing number of micro mini PCs converted into NASs. Again, from the Minis Forum to the Ustar to the EPC, to any of these names out there that are rocking out a mini PC that's been hybridized into a NAS with a couple of 2.5 gig ports, I say a lot of them arrive with Wi-Fi on board. And a lot of you don't care. Notwithstanding, a lot of uh, NAS operating systems can't even use that Wi-Fi. On top of that, you're relying on wired connections because you want reliability, stable, and consistent connections. So what are you gonna do? Well, take for example, this board here. This board has got two M.2 slots here, but one of them is this one here, a 2242 designed for a Wi-Fi card there. However, there are adapters in the market that you can choose to use that are allow you to turn an M.2 that's been designed in size for a smaller board for a Wi-Fi card into a fully fledged 2280 length adapter. Now, the size, shape, and angle of them differ, so you will have to factor that into the physical design of your chassis, and some of them are actually quite flexible, but it allows you to take advantage of a smaller M.2 slot, typically reserved for a Wi-Fi card adapter, and allow you to add via this PCB extension a traditional one key there at the top, uh, M.2 NVMe. Bear in mind, again, your system software is going to have to make a difference there. Sometimes in the BIOS, it will be locked to a Wi-Fi card. You may have to look into that. But nevertheless, that is a way to turn a relatively, frankly, unpopular use of an M.2 into something more useful to you. And ultimately, that's the point of this video. If you have a spare M.2, don't just assume you're gonna use it for storage, or if it's a micro connector, there are ways to expand it. Personally, we're gonna be working on that PCIe upgrade because I want to see what this can do. And moreover, I want to see which NAS brands can take advantage of it. But 
any of the solutions I've talked about today are going to be great to make the most of that slot. Now, if you want to learn more, links in the description. Hopefully the written reviews and its test and evaluation of all of these devices that I've talked about will be linked down there. Yes, there's links to buy these on Amazon and AliExpress. And if you were going to go to those shops anyway, and if you found this video helpful, please use those links. Don't do it if those two things aren't true though, but if they are true, use those links. Me and Eddie, it's just us at NAS Compares, get a little commission, which goes right back into doing what we do. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.